There is no other feeling when your favorite show ends up getting canceled. This happened to the fans of Longmire, a modern western based on a variety of best-selling books by Craig Johnson. How long has Longmire Season 7 been streaming? Was Longmire a hit among people? Stay tuned to find out all the important unanswered questions we need answered. First up, how long has Longmire Season 7 been streaming for? The TV show stars Australian actor Robert Taylor as Walt Longmire, the devoted traditional sheriff of the made-up Wyoming county of Absaroka. The show also stars Deputy Vic Moretti, who is portrayed by Katie Sackhoff. The six-season television program made its A&E debut in 2012, but was canceled after only three seasons. Finally, Netflix intervened to save it, making it one of the fortunate few to escape death. However, everything good must finally come to an end, and after three more seasons on Netflix, Longmire ended its run in 2017, but the program was permanently canceled. Next up, was Longmire a hit among fans? In terms of original scripted cable programming, the second season of the show had an unusually high average audience of about 6 million people per episode on A&E, making it the network's most watched original series in history. Ratings had fallen at the time of its discontinuation nevertheless. For example, the season 3 finale only attracted an average of 3.7 million viewers. The former number is more than respectable, but the latter one is a little underwhelming. For comparison, the average viewership for Mad Men never exceeded 3 million, while the average audience for the first four seasons of Breaking Bad was under 2 million. New seasons showing on AMC didn't start seeing an uptick in views until the latter series debuted on Netflix. Therefore, even if Longmire's viewership has gradually declined, its cancellation by A&E still came as a surprise. So, even though the cancellation was undoubtedly shocking, it may be possible to understand how A&E made its choice. Netflix, on the other hand, can't be claimed to be dependent on advertising revenue. Additionally, since Netflix doesn't disclose its viewership statistics, it's impossible to know how well the show did. Next off, were Longmire viewers too old to be relevant? During its time on A&E, Longmire was one of the most watched hour-long dramas on cable television, averaging between 3 and 5 million views per week. It was also very creative since it was a traditional TV western show about a rough-and-tumble Wyoming sheriff played by Robert Taylor, but it was set in the present day and dealt with contemporary societal themes. While there were many westerns on TV in the 1950s and 1960s, Longmire was essentially the sole example from the present day, and its success demonstrated that there was still a market for the genre. However, after three seasons and its most-watched original drama ever, a and canceled the program because almost all of its consistently large viewers of millions was over 50. Since advertisers claim that this demographic is most willing to purchase new items and has the most disposable income, TV networks are particularly interested in attracting viewers between the ages of 18 and 49. According to the argument, people over 50 have established buying patterns and are therefore much more resistant to advertising, which powers the TV. Netflix quickly picked up Longmire, and since it isn't ad-supported, it doesn't care about ad demographics. Next up, was the series only intended to run for six seasons? First, it's possible that Longmire just reached the end of its run. By the end of the sixth season, the show had already covered a large portion of the best-selling novel series by Johnson that served as its inspiration. It's probable that the authors decided to end the series rather than try to expand on the original plot. The contracts for the performers could also be a factor in the cancellation. There isn't much evidence to imply that the fact that many contracts today are for six seasons was the cause of the problem, but many shows have aired for more than six seasons as actors have signed new contracts throughout the years. Next off, did the actors disagree with the upcoming season? It it is still possible that Taylor and or other actors refuse to accept new contracts to save the program. These contracts, which make shows even more expensive the longer they run, are another factor that may have contributed to the cancellation. We might never fully understand the reasons behind Netflix's decision in the end. The only thing we can be certain of is that Netflix granted Longmire three more seasons than it would have otherwise received. It is good enough. It would be difficult to be angry about that. The actors could not have wanted to commit to the program or sign a new contract. Next up, did Longmire have an ending? After six seasons on Netflix, Longmire came to an end, and fans of the contemporary Western series are still discussing the denouement over four years later. The fact that Longmire spent its first three seasons entirely on A&E until the network abruptly canceled it was somewhat unusual for a television show. However, the show's run on Netflix was extended for an extra three seasons, allowing it to receive the satisfying conclusion that many had hoped for. The show's final episode, Goodbye is Always Implied, was the product of years of storytelling and a demonstration of how far the program had progressed from its episode roots to something more serialized. Next up, what was the Longmire ending about? Since the program wouldn't exist without the bad people, let's start there. The Irish Mafia and Malachi Strand, Walt's two biggest issues, offered a single united threat this season that primarily operated on the periphery. People like Strand, Eddie Harp, and Shane Muldoon were hardly ever present. Instead, the FBI and Jacob Nighthorse's security detail were compromised by their hired goons. The strategy involved several facets, seize control of Nighthorse's casino from him and utilize it as a front for the distribution 
distribution of heroin. Malachi's connections with tribal police officers would prevent them from looking into important events on the reservation, and the Irish mob's informant inside the FBI would accept money in exchange for keeping Longmire and the FBI in the dark. The story finally completes a circle when a Longmire for Sheriff sign reappears on the county's main route. Instead, Katie Longmire will now be fulfilling the position. Even though Katie has demonstrated her ability to wield firearms before, the choice feels out of character, but it relates to the series' overarching theme. Longmire and Standing Bear serve as the city and rural, respectively, consciences of the country. As Walt notes, relations between Native Americans and whites are cordial but parallel. You need the balance of two powerful leaders for things to stay peaceful. It's always a Longmire and a Standing Bear in this region of Wyoming. Next up, what will the cast of Longmire do in the future? Even though its final season aired in 2017, Longmire is still a hit. Check out what the cast has been doing lately. Playing Sheriff Walt Longmire is Robert Taylor. Taylor perfectly captures this law enforcement officer from a rural town who looks like a cowboy. If you miss the sheriff on screen, you may catch Taylor in the roles of Dr. Heller in The Meg from 2018, Jeff Walters in The Newsreader, or Reverend Cover in the charming Dolly Parton's Heartstrings episode, Down from Dover. Longmire's deputy, Vic Moretti, a native of Philadelphia, relocates to Absaroka County. She portrayed Leslie Joe Coy on The Flash in the Arrowverse, and also uses voice acting to play a variety of characters. In the science fiction thriller series Another Life, she played Nico Breckenridge. It's safe to assume that Baby Yoda's companion and the devoted worker is already a legendary figure. On to Standing Bear now. The incredible Lou Diamond Phillips portrays him. Henry Standing Bear, a character played by Lou Diamond Phillips in the television series Longmire, is well known. You can see him on the Fox series Prodigal Son as he waits for his historic victory at the World Series of Poker. Other than him, many other actors are on their way to moving on from Longmire. Next off, will Longmire ever come back? As already said, there won't be a season 7 of Longmire, but it doesn't mean there won't ever be additional episodes or a spin-off. Hope is all we have. Strange things have happened, but it appears that Longmire will be on indefinite hiatus, at least for the immediate future. The only way we can envision it coming back is if Netflix decides to relaunch the program or develop a spin-off series. It would be interesting to follow Katie's experiences now that she is in control of the sheriff's office. A Netflix original is always sorry to see it terminated, but one of this caliber must remain grateful that Netflix saw an opportunity to develop three more breathtaking seasons of the show. Overall, though, Longmire was able to provide its viewers with some much-needed closure, and while the episode's conclusion was largely positive, Walt and Vic's final encounter contained just enough sorrow to prevent the show from denigrating into pure fan service. Which season of Longmire is your favorite? Do you look forward to season 7 of Longmire? Make sure to let us know your thoughts down below. Thanks for watching.